All right, guys, we are here in Sarasota at Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium for a special behind the scenes tour. This is rarely seen. Come along for the ride. We are here in the Rescue Coral Laboratory with Matt. We're gonna go behind the scenes. It is feeding time and he's got a shrimp cocktail or something that we have for him. <laughs> yeah, so it's our, our coral cocktail. So they get a lot of mysis shrimp. We feed them daily. Uh, and we'll use uh, turkey basters to feed these guys. Super excited, let's go. If you guys ever wanna see this in action, the aquarium food preparation room is where it happens. You can come check out all of the Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium chefs hooking it up for a lot of these species. So all we got a lot of species here, huh? Yeah, we've got 10 species of corals. So these corals are all rescue corals in the Florida Reef Track Project. That is really cool. So how do they eat? Uh, so they'll catch it with their tentacles and then pull it into their mouths. So most of these guys have hundreds of mouths on each colony. What kind of senses do these corals have? Uh, so they, they respond to stimulus. So if you touch them, they'll kind of retract in. Uh, they do have some olfactory senses, so they can kind of smell their food in the water. So once they start sensing that food in the water, they'll start to extend those tentacles uh, and grab that food. So you guys have a whole facility in Isla Mirada, the coral restoration moat project going on over there. You guys are restoring them, trying to make the environment just healthier for coral for us and sustainability of marine life. Yep, so the more corals you have out there, the more diversity you're going to have. And Isla Marada is actually just one of the three restoration sites we have down in the Keys. Yeah, high five on that. That All is right. amazing. Awesome. This is so cool. If you guys want to come down here in Sarasota, you can literally watch this whole happen. You do this once a day. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Guys, this is so cool. I mean, we got groupers, a big live groupers, tarpon, redfish, snook. Big sheep that all these different species, three different sharks. It is so cool. The biggest jackerbells I've ever seen in my life. Look at that. So cool. All right, guys, we are here with Rebecca. We're going to be hanging out with sharks, and it's training day. Yeah. Can you talk about what we're going to be doing? Sure. So we're going to be training our two nurse sharks, Pico and Salsa. We train our sharks so that they're comfortable with us and that they're um, comfortable with coming into the back so that they annual medical exams or we just need to observe them for a certain amount of time. They're comfortable with being back here and then being around us as well. That's exciting guys, look at this. Let's get to it. We've got some shrimp, squid, and capelin, which is a type of little feeder fish. And then we also have shark gelatin. Um, this is a good, like, nutrient-dense food. So to start our training session, we're going to have Jenna do an auditory cue. Salsa's target has the black X. Pico's target is going to have a black dot in the center. Salsa. So they're going to be found in both Mexico, Atlantic Ocean, pretty much closer to uh, any coral reefs as well. There you go. We are training these sharks. It was so cool to play with these sharks and train these sharks. They're so smart. They're so powerful. Rebecca did an amazing job here. This is so cool, guys. Guys, this is my favorite fish, the puffer fish, because they are just, they look so happy all the time. Check these out. Hey guys, we are here in the Aquarium Conservation Lab with Amanda. We got gobies. Tell us about these little fish here. 
Sure, so they are really, really small, but they have a huge impact. Uh, they are actually cleaner fish, oh. which means that they eat the dead skin cells and leftover little bits of food off of other fish. So they're really, really important for healthy coral reefs and very popular in aquariums. So we are breeding them in the Aquarium Conservation Lab to lessen the impact that we have on wild populations um, and also make the fish in our exhibits a little more healthy. So we pair them too. So do they, do they mate for life? They don't. So neon gobies don't mate for life, but they'll lay their eggs inside of the tube and then they'll take turns guarding them until they hatch. So equal partnership here. Mm -hmm. Men take notes. <laughs> so in one batch, a female goby can lay a couple of hundred eggs. Wow. So between two to three hundred. So I'm going to put my, my fingers in there and they're going to try to clean them. Yep. Oh boy. Here mm -hmm. we go. This is crazy. Oh my God, it tickles. You know what? I can get used to this. Who needs showers? Just get a bunch of goats. <laughs> A really big sea turtle and someone told me that he's 40 years old. Look at him! That is, I've never been this close to one. Wow. This thing is huge. How do you get to be 1,800 pounds eating salad? Amanda, what's going to happen behind us? The very first thing we're going to train our animals is a target behavior. So Hugh's target, or think of it as a name tag, is the white circle. Buffett is the black square. And this allows us to call our animals over to keep them in one spot so we can have a good close-up visual look at them. You can see right here, we have good access to his underside having a trainer in the water, having the animals comfortable to being handled and lifted in different ways and manipulated is really great for their husbandry. So it's a pretty special thing. You guys are gonna actually watch us practicing our blood draw with them. Ooh. So we do blood draws annually, Ooh. just like you would go to the doctor once a year, have your blood drawn. <laughs> Through positive reinforcement, we can ask them to take their blood. So we're just doing our practice training for it. So it'll be pretty cool. All right, let's check it out, guys. Manatees are pretty food motivated, so whenever you have a food motivated animal, it makes training that much easier. We do use whistles to teach our manatees that what they did when they heard that whistle is the correct thing. So it's basically like telling our manatees, good job, you're gonna get a reward. I'm good if you guys are ready to send you on in and We'll right. start with his blood draw first. This is life goals right here. This is great. <laughs> so Hugh and Buffett have been trained for voluntary blood oh, draws for yeah. many, many years, and we've actually been able to utilize them. Woo! Big breath. <laughs> well, that right there highlights just how trusting this position is. They're relying on us to help them come up and take that breath. Wow. Two, three. Oh, right in the middle uh, of the <laughs> The red are is the beets. <laughs> it's not blood, it's beets. It is so exciting, guys, to see the different techniques, the research programs that everything combined makes it so seamlessly, like, just efficient for this animal to not only get the treatment, but also advance in developmental things here at Moat. There's just so much trust here, guys. I wish I could explain how much trust there is for this big, beautiful creature. What an amazing day here in Sarasota with Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium. I mean, seeing some octopus, playing with manatees and training sharks, feeding corals, such an eventful day here. Come check us out down here in Sarasota, Moat Marine Laboratory and Aquarium, guys.